Before we start this video, I just want to mention that only 20.7% of you are subscribed. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks. Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing, for the sixth time, the events that transpired in the Harry Potter universe after the books and films ended. I have now made five separate videos on this topic to date, parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which each cover 10 separate characters and what they got up to post Deathly Hallows. Between those five videos, I've managed to cover Voldemort, Neville, Hermione, Ron, Harry, George, Luna, Hagrid, Draco, the Dursleys, Umbridge, Fudge, Lockhart, Flitwick, Filch, Ollivander, Kingsley Shacklebolt, Pomona Sprout, Arthur, Molly Weasley, Percy Weasley, Aberforth Dumbledore, Fleur, Seamus Finnegan, McGonagall, Narcissa, Lucius, Cormac McLaggen, Grawp, Rita Skeeter, Slughorn, Dean Thomas, Charlie Weasley, Sybil Trelawney, Forenze, Oliver Wood, Madame Maxime, Bill Weasley, Pansy Parkinson, Aunt Marge, Patil Twins, Ginny Weasley, Newt Scamander, Cho Chang, Andromeda Tonks, Moaning Myrtle, Xenophilius Lovegood, Katie Bell, Bane, Winky, Poppy Pomfrey, and Mundungus Fletcher. And I'm not stopping. Today, I'm going to be continuing that trend and giving you part 6 of What Happened to These 10 Characters After the War. I'll link parts 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in the pinned comment. I've got just enough characters left for part 7 as well, so keep an eye out for that in the near future. Without further ado, let's dive into the lives of 10 characters post-war and post-Deathly Hallows. 1. Rolanda Hooch Rolanda, or Madame Hooch, is a British witch who is speculated to have been born sometime before the year 1918. There isn't that much information available on her, and she doesn't appear in the books or films very much. However, she is very important in that she is the one responsible for teaching the students their foundational knowledge of flying broomsticks. Not only that, but Madame Hooch is a Quidditch referee, an aerial sport. Really, her whole world revolves around flying, which is why it shouldn't surprise you that, after the war had ended, Madame Hooch simply returned to her post at Hogwarts, where she continued to teach flying and referee Quidditch for many years to come. 2. Elphias Doge Elphias Doge is a British pure-blood wizard born in either 1880 or 1881. Notably, Doge was a close friend of Dumbledore, their friendship blossoming during their schoolboy years. While at Hogwarts, Doge came down with a bad case of dragonpox, causing everyone to avoid him, except of course for Dumbledore. Elphias was an active member of the Order of the Phoenix, in both wars, and a Ministry of Magic jurist. Poison Peace specialist Rita Skeeter would often refer to Doge as dim-witted, However, that's likely only due to his lack of cooperation during the writing of Skeeter's magnum opus, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. In fact, Doge, a special advisor to the Wizengamot, was quite the opposite of dim-witted, and lived out the rest of his days serving the British Ministry for Magic, arguing with Great Aunt Muriel, and missing his dear friend Albus Dumbledore. 3. Creature Creature was a male house elf, born in an unknown year, who loyally served at the House of Black for the majority of his life. That is, until he was left with Harry Potter after the death of Sirius. Before this, however, Creature was known to be fiercely loyal to Sirius's brother, Regulus, who he shared a special bond with. After the death of Regulus, Creature was a bit lost, never learning to properly respect his new master, Sirius. However, Creature did eventually come to respect Harry, who treated him extremely well. During the Battle of Hogwarts, Creature led the house elves into the fray against Lord Voldemort and his followers. Creature ended up surviving the battle, and from that point, entered into full-time service of the Potter family. In 2017, J.K. Rowling revealed that Creature did eventually die at the tender age of 666. Where he was at that time is anyone's guess. 4. Victor Crumb Victor Crumb is a Bulgarian wizard born in 1976, perhaps best known for competing against Harry, Fleur, and Cedric in the Triwizard Tournament, representing his school, Durmstrang. Crumb was an exceptionally gifted Quidditch player, 
and was the seeker for the Bulgarian national Quidditch team at the tender age of 18. In 1994, he played in the final of the Quidditch World Cup, and he was still just a student. Crum continued to play Quidditch for many years before his eventual retirement following the Bulgarian team's defeat in the 2002 World Cup final. However, this retirement didn't last long, as Crum came out of retirement to compete in the 2014 World Cup. Famously, the Bulgarian team won that year's cup, beating out Brazil in the finals. Crum retired a true Quidditch legend. 5. John Dawlish John Dawlish is a British pureblood wizard and Ministry of Magic employee who served the institution as an aura. For most of his career, Dawlish worked directly underneath Cornelius Fudge, accompanying him on various assignments. Dawlish would also later work for ministers Rufus Scrimger and Pius Thickness. Dawlish failed quite a few assignments towards the end of the Second Wizarding War, the most likely reason being that he repeatedly faced far superior opponents, Dumbledore, unfamiliar situations, Hagrid being a half-giant, and continual placement under the Confunders charm. Not much is known of what happened to Dawlish following the war, but we do know that he survived, and that he continued to act not quite right for some time after, most likely due to his repeated subjection to the Confunders charm. It's unlikely that Dawlish was charged as a sympathizer of Voldemort, and it's entirely probable that, due to his brain damage, he ended up in St. Mungo's. 6. Blaze Sabini Blaze Sabini was a pureblood wizard that attended Hogwarts around the same time as Harry Potter. He was a member of Slytherin House, and was on good terms with Draco Malfoy and his gang. Blaze was a quiet boy that mostly kept to himself, but on occasion would express his extreme prejudice towards muggles, muggleborns, and blood traitors. No one knows exactly what happened to Blaze post-war, but we do know that he probably survived as most Slytherin students sat the battle out. Given that Blaze was skilled in potion making, progressing to the newt level in the subject, it's entirely possible that he pursued a career in potions. 7. Mrs. Fig Mrs. Fig, aka Arabella Doreen Fig, was a squib that lived near Harry Potter's childhood home on Privet Drive, the Dursley residence. Given that she lived down the street from Harry, she would commonly babysit him, simultaneously helping to keep an eye on him for Albus Dumbledore. Though Mrs. Fig did whatever she could to help the Order and good guys, as a squib, it's unlikely that she participated in the Battle of Hogwarts. It wouldn't have been safe for her there. Given her affinity for furry feline companions, I like to imagine that Mrs. Fig lived out the rest of her days crossbreeding and trading part measle cats. 8. Marcus Flint Marcus Flint was a pureblood wizard born in 1976 whose family name appeared on the Sacred 28, a list of 28 pureblood wizarding families. He attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry from 1987 to 1994, and notably served as captain of the Slytherin Quidditch team from at least 1991 to 1994. Flint was one of Harry's Quidditch rivals. No one knows what happened to Marcus Flint, but given his affinity for the mockery of others and inability to play nice, I doubt he got far. There's always the possibility he became a professional Quidditch player, but I personally don't think that any teams would have welcomed him on board. 9. Ernie Macmillan Ernie Macmillan was a pureblood wizard who attended Hogwarts during the same years as Harry Potter. Notably, Ernie was the one who suspected that Harry Potter was the heir of Slytherin during the opening of the Chamber of Secrets in his second year. That is, until Hermione was petrified and Ernie changed his mind later apologizing to Harry. Ernie survived the Battle of Hogwarts, but not much is known of his later life. I like to imagine that he stayed in touch with his good friends Hannah Abbott and Justin Finch Fletchley, which would also put him in Neville's social circle, given that Hannah was married to Neville. 10. Crookshanks Crookshanks was Hermione's half measle pet cat that she purchased from Magical Menagerie in 1993. Crookshanks was a particularly intelligent cat helping to expose Peter Pettigrew as Scabbers. Though Crookshanks is very cute and highly intelligent, it's unlikely that he would have been much help during the final battle of the war, so instead he stayed at the home of the Weasleys, the Burrow, waiting things out until everything had settled down. He was later reunited with Hermione. Given that Crookshanks was just a cat in a pet store that apparently nobody wanted, 
He really did make quite an impact on the story. And that's it for this video. Who next? Who have I missed? Leave a comment down below. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.